everyone, uh, Aaron here with you, and I wanted to go ahead and do a full-on uh, review video for you on my Langstroth Long Long Hive Langstroth Deep Frame Long Hive build that I've done, and some of the features and stuff. If um, if you want to get some of the measurements and the details of how I went about it, uh, I'll try and leave a link to, up here to the uh, two videos that I'm I put together while I was building and talking through some of the dimensions and and the sizing and the shapes and the way I cut things and the purpose for it you can you can watch and review those but for now I just want to show you the completed hive I want to show you some of the features of it and the uh, a couple of modifications I did since I uh, did those two videos so first off um, take a quick look here uh, in the background of course we got our wonderful birds uh, this these hives are, are going to be placed into our bird yard uh, once we get done we found out after watching many videos that uh, the birds really like to do a good job of keeping the ground clean for the hive beetles hive beetles is um, an issue here I've got hive beetles in some of my hives uh, it seems like they're They've been picking up here lately. Not too bad because I got good strong hives, but everything I'm doing is going to be around the protection of the bees from any potential um, intruders. So, what you're looking at is the back of the hive. We have uh, uh, aluminum flashing for a roof, and if you come over and look over, you can see I've got uh, three pieces, one on either side with one folded over screwed down with some nice flathead screws in order to help hold it down. Uh, I have a nice uh, just a, a standard hook latch but something to hold it down and hold it pretty solid so that if something wanted to get into it, an animal or such, um, it wouldn't do a very good job of it. It would have to have to know how to open one of these. Then, uh, well let's see on the outside. Then if you come around here, let me get the I have to, let me show you the doors. Okay, so the doors I've done with two little plates here. I've got two different openings, and it's set up to where I intentionally didn't leave any kind of thumb hole to it because I don't want it bumped and moved. I want to, I want to, I want whatever movement these doors do to be deliberate, and nothing can easily get into it. So you can use your hive tool to give it a little turn, like such, and adjust the opening for their protection. So on a new hive you could start out with a small hole and as once this hive is built up with uh, many many bars you might open both holes to allow for a lot of traffic. Uh, as you can see three very beefy hinges and then if you come back around over here the other outside feature uh, two, two things we want to talk about is how wide I set the legs to help make this uh, this uh, this this hive sit pretty stable now wherever I put this I'm gonna have to level out the ground and level out the feet so that they could sit it's not on very level ground now but I also have two holes that have been drilled here so that once I get to working on this and I'll show you the inside here in just a second but here on the outside I've got two holes set so that I can put these removable dowels and these are steel rods so that as I'm working on it when I pull the frame out I can set that frame here to let the to let the frames have a place to sit out here so I'm not turning them over and setting them on the ground we actually have a place that I can put the hive uh, put the frames as I'm working on them so let's take a look at this uh, take a look at the inside here this is the a, t a takeoff of Dr. Leo's uh, design with some modifications. I've got a double rabbit in here on either end so I can have the frames sit down on it and then have them covered. The intention here is as you can see is that once everything is here that I can I can keep my uh, I can keep my frames covered so that uh, I'm only disturbing the frames that I wish to get in. I have enough slats made 
to completely cover the entire top. So it will go all the way out like that. So those will sit here for the moment. And so these are intended to cover the whole thing so that you can take out just a couple of them at a time and work on whatever frames you have available that you want to look at without disturbing the rest of the hive. It isolates your, your entry into the hive and keeps you uh, focused on one little, little area. Now, in doing so, this hive has been made very, uh, very uh, well sealed up. Like I said, the intent is to keep everything else out and keep just the bees in. And the only way anything gets in is through the front doors that are down here. Okay. It is vented. Uh, there are four equally spaced vents down here on the bottom. Using an aluminum wire screen to allow uh, for the air to come in, but insects to have a very difficult time getting through, if any at all. The same thing goes up here, the upper vent. It is an aluminum wire screen. As you can see, I've also taken wood glue and sealed it in there really, really well. There's no chance of bugs working their way through unless they figure out how to cut through, uh, cut through the aluminum screen. So, I also have kept, I also kept all the little plugs. And the reason for that is uh, I may want to, for winter, winter time uh, preparations for the for the bees be able to close off some of these vents so if you look underneath with a little piece of tape on the bottom I could close off the hole and help insulate the inside of the box even more that's the main reason we went with a full two by uh, on the tops here so uh, will, you, will you say well um, how does the air flow well the bees will pull the air through there with their wings. The air will come up through the hives. And as you can see, uh, we have a divider board so that our hive stays the size that we want. So we don't, you know, if we only got five frames, we can only have five frames. Ten frames, fifteen. We can expand this hive as it gets big enough. And then we've got it sealed off so that very little uh, can actually get in and through and around here. Okay, you see that? Mm -hmm. So, uh, we also did the vent here. So, air can come up through the bottom, through the hives, through here, and then up through the, the top and out the hole. So, you got a good circulation. Air will move through here. And I do have intentions uh, of, of wintertime placing uh, some kind of insulation on the top here to truly... Uh, hold the heat in and help these girls overwinter in this box. Thick insulation, thick, uh, thick insulation that will be on top for that. I also have it set up where I can keep a feeder in here. And I'm working on an idea and I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it, but I would like to be able to fill the, this feeder up for the girls um, during the winter without removing the lid or lifting the lid. Now it's possible I could do that with these uh, slats on top and some kind of insulation on top. I could potentially lift the lid and fill this. The other other idea, and I'm not 100% sure, is potentially using one of those uh, hive bar, uh, the, the, the bar feeders where, where you can take the jar and, and put it down there and cut a notch and maybe actually feed them through under here. That's one potential too. Uh, whatever it is I got to do to keep keep the bees from coming in here unless this hive is completely full. I have notched out I have notched out one board here so that hopefully uh, I can fill this thing all the way up. I'm not sure they might be able to get through that. They can get through small places and then they may not. We just don't want the, the girls to build when we're not ready for them to build on whatever's uh, in here. I think I got it pretty well sealed up. We, we have run weather stripping all the way around. Ooh, look, we could take that off. Hmm. Uh -huh. And so that when this, when the, when the, when the lid is down, when the lid is down, 
that it really does seal it up and that you're not going to get uh, potential insects or water to, to move through this if it's sealed up pretty well. All right, let's see. I think I've got most of it mm -hmm. covered. Um, it's a good solid, job. A solid wood construction all the way around. Good um, construction grade plywood. Um, you know, the, the pins are removable and everything could pack up like such. Uh, I've had a few people already ask me, um, well, would you build me one? And I'm, I would consider it. Uh, I, I love building these things. It was a fun project, and I think we could get this down to a box that would be big enough to ship, although I think shipping might be costly. I, would, I think I, I would prefer that people just learn how to, uh, or do this on this. This is, a good, this is a good project. Well, an idea if they do want to have what we've done, we could do like most of the other folks and have it cut everything and then they just have to assemble it yeah we could do a, 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 an assembly it's still going to be still going to be it is still be heavy but we could we could here, it's uh, something to think about i mean but anyway the, hopefully somebody could take this and and just run with it all of these plugs are available that i kept so that i could close off a portion of it yeah you know uh put a little piece of tape on it just to hold it there um I, don't know, I think I've said pretty much everything there is. I it's, think we've pretty well got it covered, honey. So, you did an awesome job. Uh, I, I hope um, hope the girls are as happy with it as I am. Um, it has the potential without the fr without the uh, feeder in here and without the divider bar in here, the separator bar. It has the potential to to accept up to 29 full frames. Mm -hmm. so, so almost. And I did that, and I did that, um, this dimension was determined, like I said, because I wanted an overhang here. I wanted the roof to overhang everything mm -hmm. really well so that we had a good watershed. The pitched roof was my desire because I wanted uh, a, a bit of architectural feature to it so it didn't look just like a flat box. I know beehives have had that Langstroth look to them for a long time but I really like the little house look and that's just my desire so um, one thing I would change on this is when um, the next one I were to would build is I I would offset this um, one rabbit a little bit we did rip down a couple of strips here because you know let's talk about this because I, I, I forgot to mention this all right so originally I was gonna have these slats slit sit literally just on top of the frames to help keep the bees from uh, propolizing around the edges of the frames which locks these things in. I, I wanted to see if I could keep them from doing so. However, because of the beetle issue uh, and needing to have the bees be able to chase those um, beetles into the, the little beetle traps that you put up here, uh, the bees have to have some room to do that. So I went ahead because I have just enough room for these to fit in here and leave that little gap. I went ahead and ripped this little strip here, glued it in so that I could have my three eighths of an inch between these slats and the hive. So now I can put one of the beetle, uh, beetle traps in there and then the bees can get to the beetles. Now I think I've covered everything. And on that note, um, those of you who do like the bees and wish to um, to have your own apiary, uh, I would I hope you consider something like this. This is so much easier. So much thought is going into all the different features here. Not all of them are mine. Uh, some of them are mine. Some of the adaptations are mine. I mean, and maybe you guys can take and improve it from here. But I put a lot of thought into this after watching many, many videos and the innovations that others have done and I just tweaked it I didn't need the biggest one I just wanted one that uh, would suffice to helpfully overwinter these girls so that we don't lose our bees in the winter time and on that note I think we've done it finally hmm. anything else I'm sure if you got any thoughts or questions please leave uh, leave them in the comments uh, let, let us know and you know if I don't know 
uh, or can't find the answer, of course, you know, the other, there's some other really good channels that are way better at it than me. Um, uh, Dave over at Barnyard Bees, um, I mean, uh, he and I don't even know, don't know each other, but I have watched so many of his videos, I feel like I know him, and he's a really good resource, so um, that's it. We'll call it a good one, and we'll catch you soon.